Though many people are quick to argue that Atlantis is solely a work of fiction, Graham Hancock, a British writer who promotes pseudoscientific theories on many far-gone civilizations and cities, might be telling us that it may not be all that easy to make that claim. The mythical island of Atlantis is located in the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantis and Atlantica are other forms of the name. The Greek philosopher Plato made the first reference to Atlantis. In the dialogues, the Timaeus and the Critias, he wrote about the island, both written about 360 BC. Conversations between two or more groups of individuals are featured in the dialogues. A character in these works talks about what he knows about Atlantis. He claims that the information was transmitted from the ancient Egyptians. In accordance with this story, Atlantis was an island bigger than Libya and Asia Minor put together. At the eastern end of the Strait of Gibraltar, past the two rock formations known as the Pillars of Hercules, the channel connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Atlantic Ocean. Rich and powerful princes from the wealthy island of Atlantis ruled over numerous Mediterranean nations. The princes and their allies were ultimately vanquished by the Athenians. The Atlanteans thereafter turned evil and unrespectful. A sequence of earthquakes that occurred around 9600 BC caused the island to sink into the water. Graham Hancock is a bold self-taught person who thinks that there was a civilization that was even more magnificent than ancient Mesopotamia, Babylonia, and Egypt. One that was so completely destroyed by a comet attack around 12,000 years ago that almost all traces of it were lost, leaving just the tiniest of remnants, including, in Hancock's opinion, a cryptic warning that such a celestial tragedy might occur to us. But it's not just this one civilization. He promotes many others, including Atlantis, in his works and talks. Hancock has suggested that Atlantis may have been a real place, based on his interpretation of various historical and mythological sources, he has argued that the story of Atlantis may have originated with the ancient Egyptians, who supposedly passed it down through their priests. Hancock believes that Atlantis was a highly advanced civilization that existed thousands of years ago and that some kind of catastrophic event destroyed it. He has suggested that this event may have been a natural disaster, such as a comet impact or a massive volcanic eruption, or it could have been a man-made catastrophe, such as a war or a technological disaster. On the 18th of September, six years ago, Graham was on the London Reel, where they discussed many of his opinions and theories starting with that of the sunken city. He states that the notion of a lost civilization was not a completely fresh idea to begin with, continuing by saying that Atlantis, the story of a magnificent and advanced civilization, came from Plato, a civilization navigating in seafaring skills and built gigantic buildings and had immense and vast knowledge on varying subjects. In ancient Greece, Plato was a philosopher and teacher. He was a key figure in the development of Western thought and literature. In Athens, Plato was born into one of the most illustrious and venerable families. Plato lost his father Ariston when he was still a little child. Plato is a nickname that means wide shoulders. The real name of Plato was Aristocles. When Socrates, his friend and teacher, received a death sentence in 299 BC, Plato's prospects of becoming a politician were dashed. Most notably, Greek philosopher and polymath Aristotle was his student. Coming back to Graham, he then says that the conceit or the pride of the people of Atlantis, the land where now corruption had crept in and found a place for itself, the feeling of the people that Atlantis had, quote, become so sure of itself that somehow the universe struck it down. After which, as we all know, commenced the cataclysm of flood and disaster, and Atlantis finds itself submerged beneath waves. He then says that the view of historians and academics on this story is that Plato's story was just a work of fiction made to prove a philosophical or political point. However, while examining the life of the thinker, Plato repeatedly claims that the story is not false. And this is where Graham brings up his first point, which was that Plato had put a date on when Atlantis was destroyed, which was 9,000 years before the time of Solon a renowned Greek lawmaker and ancestor of Plato, who lived 200 years before the philosopher, which was around 600 BC. Solon during that time made a visit to Egypt, where priests of a temple in the Delta told him the story of Atlantis, and Solon claimed that it was written on the walls of the temple. And 9,000 years ago was the answer that Solon received when he asked how long before it occurred. So in our current calendars, that would be 9,600 BC, which is 11,600 years ago from now.
Plato tells us that this story definitively occurred 11,600 years ago today and is laughed at by historians and academics alike. But things really begin to get deep when present-day geology comes into view. In geological history, we find that what happened 11,600 years ago is a truly tempestuous episode called Meltwater Pulse 1b, due to which Earth witnessed a massive rise in sea level as the ice sheets on North America and Northern Europe collapse into the seas. If Plato truly had fabricated the story, it's truly uncanny how close he was when we take a look at modern-day geology. Graham says, And I think that we really have to reconsider our attitudes to these stories that have come down to us from the past. Academics have been too quick to dismiss them, too quickly to say, Oh, we figured the whole story out. There's no mystery there. Maybe there's a huge mystery there and tells us that we should listen to various clues and hints from the past that speak of similar civilizations. Graham truly does theorize that such events may just be real unlike what we all think. For backing his theories, the British author presents a narrative in which he first references the catastrophe Earth faced 12.8 thousand years ago, wherein a comet drifting from space collided with our blue planet, which would then set off the events of the Ice Age. Of course, do remember that this is only a theory and lacks decisive scientific backing. Hancock says that if such an event were to occur on modern-day Earth, the only ones who would survive would be the hunter-gatherers, like the Kalahari Bushmen. Hunting, fishing, and foraging for wild plants and other food sources, such as honey, were all important aspects of the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. And sources say that these were the type of humans that existed around after the comet crash. He adds that if we were to speculate and think of those descendants of said hunter-gatherers 10,000 years from now, they would, quote, tell a story about how there had been a time where there was a great civilization on this earth, you know? They could send people to the moon. These sentences are in reference to us modern-day humans. The theoretical descendants continue with their story as follows. They could fly around the world and speak to each other on other sides of the planet, but something went wrong. They became cruel. They became arrogant. They began to impose their will on others. They ceased to wear their prosperity with moderation, and the universe struck them down. The narrative put forward by Graham ends with these lines. But he states that there is a moral lesson that we must learn from the story of Atlantis, which is that we humans should stop being so arrogant and stop displaying great pride in our achievements and be modest and learn from the mistakes of the past. The subject of Atlantis's existence has been one that was tackled time and again. However, mainstream academia still replies in the negative and asserts that it couldn't be possible at all and that there couldn't be a lost civilization and that they know everything about the past and continues to dismiss such theories to this day. The next thing Graham puts forward is another hypothesis of his, which is that such evidence would become overwhelming and that it will all reach a tipping point, after which we will quote, complete the new understanding of the past or a radical revision of the past and therefore of our place in the world as well. Though right now, all we can do is wait and see what further discoveries we can make of this. But before that, subscribe to our channel with post notifications and in the meantime, check out this video where we take a look at how we found signs and designs of the Great Pyramids and Atlantis on a 7,000-year ancient relic. Thanks for watching.